unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word.
Those words are true. That indeed before God you have a great and perfect being. A great high priest whose name is love. And the Bible says he ever lives. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. 
Somebody thank God for that high priest. Come on, thank you for that high priest. The song says, Is that spotless righteousness? Is that great I am? One with himself, you cannot die because you're one with him. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. He loves us. Tell somebody he loves us. Tell your immediate neighbor he loves us. Tell the person behind you he loves me. Maybe the person behind you may not understand. You tell him, okay, now let me make it personal here. Jesus loves me. Passionately. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? You may be seated. Praise the Lord Jesus. I think let us open our Bibles to the book of Haggai chapter 2 and verses 6. Let us read from the Amplified. Something good is happening. I feel it when something is happening. Tell somebody something good is happening in my life today. I'm not living the same way that I came. In the name of Jesus. Now the Bible says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts. He says, Yet once more, in a little while, the Bible says, I will shake and make tremble the starry heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. The Bible says, I will shake all nations. Somebody say, I'll shake all nations. Say it again and say, I will shake all nations. The Bible says, I'll shake all nations. And the desire and the precious things of all nations, the Bible says, shall come in. And I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. And he says, the latter glory of this house with its successor to which Jesus came shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, somebody say, in this place, I will give peace and prosperity. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say, it is mine. In the name of Jesus. Say it again and say, it is mine. In the name of Jesus. Say it one more time and say, it is mine. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me begin this way. We have for so long, and I mean for a very long time, Lived in the shadow of things to come. Without beholding the very things. Because some of our brethren in the body of Christ have not embraced the words of this life. We have lived a form of Christianity. Many of you I believe can attest to. Where we are almost in every aspect of our lives. Victims of circumstance. And we are ever living in and out of trouble, problems, turmoil, struggle and all kinds of things. It's almost as though to some people, Christianity is the antidote for people who are struggling. And who intend to be ministered to a certain way as long as they struggle in their lives. The gospel has been greatly so misrepresented by some people. Who have understood again that kind of gospel. And again I don't blame them because that's also what they know. Are you hearing me child of God? That's also what they what? They know. So they cannot give you beyond what they know. But you see I thank God for this generation. And what exactly he's pouring out in this generation. 
And tonight I want to open my spirit out to share something that I've been meditating for quite a long time. And I believe that by the end of this service, if you came a mediocre, if you came as a survivor, if you came just to, to pass time, if you're in the life of salvation just to exist, tonight something must change upon your life. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Even if you don't know yet what I'm going to share, you just say amen, God, amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. You see, many times when we preach about grace, the message, of course, some people think that we are telling people, you've heard, I know many of you have heard, oh, those people, they're telling people to sin so good should come. They're telling people that even if your inner man is okay, as long as he's okay, you can do anything you want outside. And we don't blame them. We know why they're doing what they're doing. And we don't want to stop them too. You know why? Because as they continue to reach people with false information, when these people discover the truth, (laughs) when this, not if, it's a when issue. When they discover the truth, they will become angry (laughs) that they were deceived. But also, certain people will be weighed against that. Praise the Lord Jesus. Some people don't know what comes first in the things of the spirit. The spirit world, like I always tell you, has an order. It has order. That's why when Luke is writing to Theophilus, he tells him of the things we began to see. The things that were most surely believed amongst us. He says, it seemed good to me also that having had perfect understanding of these things from the very first. In other words, he had a perfect understanding of things from the very first to the second to the third. He says, and to write unto thee in order, that very order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of the things in which thou hast been instructed. That you will be established in the things which you have been instructed. That you don't just receive instruction without certainty. That you don't just receive instruction Of things you're not sure about. The gospel is surety. The word of God is surety. The Bible says we have the sure word of prophecy. Of which we do good to heed. As a light in darkness. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. The word of God is sure. Praise the Lord. Whatever he has spoken upon your life is sure. Whatever he has promised you is sure. Whatever he has said in your life, you are persuaded and sure that he will accomplish it to the day of Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. But we cannot walk a life of insecurity in a dispensation where things are supposed to be sure. That is why Paul says, I'm persuaded of greater things which accompany salvation. Persuasion means we are not simply believing and hoping, we are sure. Let me tell you, I am sure of my success. Tell your neighbor the same if you believe it. I'm sure of my success. I'm not believing God to be a success. I have believed that I'm a success. Praise the Lord. There are people who sometimes, some of you have been around negative people. That one, you give her two weeks. That guy, you give him one year. That person, you give them three years. How do you speak about a woman or a man When you don't know their altar. (laughs) When you don't understand the altar from which they eat. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, we have an inheritance. The Bible says incorruptible. You, You get where I'm coming from? It's like when Pharaoh thought that he could destroy Israel. That's why the Bible says when God looks at the work of the wicked, he laughs. There are things that make God laugh. When some people start mounting themselves on you, like cheap chargers, God laughs. He laughs. No, he, he, that's what the Bible says. He looks at, at them. He's, he's, you see, I laugh at those who think you will fail. I laugh at them. God does laugh at them. You see, some of you have failed to understand this. Hmm? Are you born again? The Bible is very clear. Corruption cannot inherit in corruption. Did you hear that? Corruption 
cannot inherit what? Incorruption. You cannot be born of the Spirit and you expect in the end to inherit incorruption. You will not inherit incorruption. Somebody say amen. I did not get born again to go to hell. And I, if somebody thinks I am, they, I feel sorry for them. Let them watch me. Somebody say amen. I am not a partaker of incorruption because I inherited incorruption. I'm not a partaker of corruption because I inherited what? Incorruption. I cannot be corrupted because the seed in you, the Bible says, and I, is incorruptible. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, the person next to you might not, not, might not understand it. But in your spirit, you bear witness with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes, some of you take too much time trying to convince people you're born again. Let me even first touch that before I go deeper. Hey, I swear I'm not this. I swear I'm not that. Listen, Paul gets to a point where he says, My spirit bears witness with the Holy Ghost that I speak truth. Sometimes all you need is the Holy Spirit to confirm what is affirmed in your spirit. That's all you need. You just need the Holy Spirit to tell you. You, you see, when Jesus was baptized in water, you remember that time? And the Bible says, and he's raised out of water. The Spirit of the Lord came. You remember? And he said, you are my son, in whom I'm well pleased. You understand? This is my son. You are my son. In whom I'm well pleased. That was enough for the Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? The spirit bearing witness that you're a child of God. Do you have the spirit of God bearing witness that you're a child of God? Answer me. Do you have the spirit of God bearing witness that you're a child of God? Then every other opinion is immaterial. Every other opinion is immaterial. Every other opinion I say, again, it is immaterial. Because you know who you are. You're born of the Spirit. You're born of God. You carry the seed of Almighty God. Hallelujah. That one is eternal. It is endless. It abides forever. Somebody say amen. I'm going to live forever. And I know it. I know it in my spirit. So temporal things are temporal. Let them come and go. They'll still find me there. Hallelujah. Because I know what I'm begotten of. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, many times we, we, are, we, we try to give excuse for preaching grace. And many people don't know the first things, the second things, the third things of the Spirit. And they don't know what comes before the other and why certain things won't work because certain orders are frustrated. I'll give you an example. The scripture says, evil communication corrupts good morals. Let me just give you an example. Evil communication corrupts good morals. How are morals corrupted? Come on. Through what? Evil communications. Did you hear that? Evil what? So, if I speak a communication that is not of God, I corrupt a man. Do you understand what I'm saying? I corrupt a what? A man. Now, for example, the Bible says that it is a good thing that the heart be established in grace. I'm just giving you an example. And not in diverse meats, wherein they that are occupied, the Bible says, have not what? Profited. You see? He says, be not carried about with strange and diverse doctrines. For it is a good thing, the Bible says, that the heart be established with grace. And he says, and not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Did you hear that? There are myths that have not profited people who are occupied therein. Myths I mean, some people sit in services that don't profit them. Some people sit in conferences that don't what? Profit them. Now, if something doesn't profit you, it's obviously unprofitable. And if it's not unprofitable, in a way, it's evil communication. You, you get my point? That is why our speech, the Bible says, must be seasoned with salt. That we might bring grace to the hearers. Not the law. Grace to our hearers. Grace. 
to the hearers, not the law. We were not created. And, and that's why I told people, I want, some people say, oh, those people are extreme grace preachers. And that's why I told people, I'm going to do a conference, and I will also call it extreme grace conference. Because I need to show people, there is no such thing as balancing grace and law. It's not there. It's not in the scriptures. You ask them, where is it written? They can't show it to you, but you have to balance. Then you tell him, show me one scripture. I can show you many scriptures that tell you what to do. The Bible says, grow ye in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And the Bible says, and great grace was upon them. The Greek word there is extreme. And extreme grace. <laughs> Woo! And the Bible says, they moved in the power of the Holy Ghost and extreme grace was upon them. Now, if you call me an extreme grace preacher, what is wrong with that? That's what the Bible says. That great power was revealed amidst them because great grace was upon them. Extreme grace. The only balance in scripture is grace and faith, not grace and law. Praise the Lord. Read it, Acts 33. With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and extreme grace was upon them all. Somebody say, I have extreme grace on me. And what is the result of that? Great power. Great power to witness the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus. So, the more you grow in grace, the greater the power. Oh, those people, they preach extreme grace and they tell people you can do anything, you can sin, you can do anything as long as you're under grace. Oh, that's, that's extreme. No, no, no. You even got the title wrong. It's not supposed, that's not extreme grace. That's deception. Don't disrespect grace to say it can be extreme and lead a man to sin. That is, that is disrespect of grace. Grace can't do that. They don't even know what they're talking about. Cheap grace preachers. Listen, grace can never be cheap. Grace can never be cheap. Grace can never be cheap. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I said when people, not if, discover that what they said we didn't really preach. <laughs> Prepare for more spaces. <laughs> tell your neighbor, grow ye in grace. Now, let me tell you why I'm saying that. It is because when you get this difference, okay? For example, I'll give you an example. The Bible says, if the ministration of death came with glory. Now, if the ministration of death, he's, he's, he's speaking about the ministration of the law. Give me the amplified of that. I prefer the amplified of that. He says, now, if the dispensation of death, listen, engraved in letters on stone, are you hearing me? The ministration of the law. Now, can you imagine the ministration of the law is the dispensation of death? Can you think about it? The ministration of the law is the dispensation of death. Because by the law, the Bible says, no flesh shall be justified. So any man that seeks justification by the law, the Bible says, he is fallen from grace. That's what they call falling from grace. When you seek justification by the law. That's being fallen from grace. But today when somebody sins, they say, their brother fell from grace. No, no. Falling from grace if you seek justification by the law. And I believe many of you know that at this level. May I continue? Now, he says, if the ministration of death engraved on stone, that is the ministration of the law, was inaugurated with such glory and splendor that the Israelites were not able to look steadily at the face of Moses because of the brilliance, a glory that was to fade and pass away. And that's the problem with the law. There is a glory that fades on your life. That is why people who are under the law usually have this kind of thing. If you have been around people who have not been established in grace, they have conversations like this. I'm feeling dry. Let me go to church. There was a time I was feeling so dry. And then I went to church. And then this woman of God worshipped a certain song. And then I was... Ah. 
Why? Because they live in a dispensation where glory fades. Their conversations are up and down. They are full of weakness. They always love even the weakness lines. You know we are human beings. You know we are flesh and blood. They are so conscious about that life. And the Bible is true in Hebrews. That the law, the Bible says, produces priests with infirmity. That's what the law does. It will cause you to be a priest with the infirmity. In other words, you'll, you'll have a, a, a list of weaknesses in your life. But you're fighting with something and it's trying to tell you you will not be justified by it. So the Bible says the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. But the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the what? The son who is what? Consecrated forevermore. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. Do you believe it? Now, we're still talking about the ministration of the law. The Bible says, when Moses, Moses' face was too bright, the brilliance thereof could not be beheld, that people had to turn away their faces because of the splendor of the glory in Moses, which was to fade away and pass away. Because men under the law carry temporal things. And that is why they have conversations of temporal things. I've been around people who have conversations of temporal things. For example, one man of God one time came to me and told me, seize this time because it is your season. So I asked him, so when is it, or will it be when it's not my season? What do you mean? I asked him, when will it be when it's not my season? Say, no, you see, let me give you examples. Like there's some men of God who are shining in the 90s, but now they are nowhere. And then there are certain men of God who are shining, shining in the early 2000s, and then they are nowhere. Even you now, it's your time to shine. And when some time will come, and then when, you're not, when you have not done certain things, you'll struggle at that particular point when another man is shining. I said, ah! <laughs> Woo! Look at the man who doesn't know the scripture. The Bible says that he that is planted in the house of the Lord, the Bible says he shall flourish in the courts of Almighty God. Somebody say amen. The Bible says that he shall be like a tree planted by a riverside. The Bible says his leaves shall not wither. And the Bible says that he shall be like a tree, the Bible says, firm planted, tended by the streams of water, ready to bring forth its fruit in its season. And its leaves shall not fed nor wither. And everything he does, he shall prosper and come to maturity. Everything. He also says that in your old age, you will still what? That is the man planted. That is a man what? He speaks of the planting which is of the Lord. I am planted by God. Tell your neighbor I am planted by God. So he says, and those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Next verse. And they shall still bring forth fruit. Give me the message. Give me the message Bible. The Bible says, transplanted to God's courtyard, they'll grow tall in the presence of God. Do you know what it means to grow tall? That means you're going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Lethal, lethal and green, very still in old age. The next verse says what? And it says, such witnesses to upright God, my mountain, he calls him my huge holy mountain. Why does he call him his huge, huge holy mountain? Because he knows who backs him. I know who backs me. You can't tell me that I'm going to produce fruit now and when I'm growing older, the glory will diminish. That's Moses. <laughs> tell somebody I'm rich now. I'm going to be rich next year. Even in my old age. <laughs> Don't be surprised when I'll stay rich and rich. Because I am planted in the house of the Lord. He says, I shall flourish in his courts. And they shall bring forth fruit in old age. And they shall be fat. And what? Flourishing. As long as I'm alive, it's my season. Me, I have believed it. Who believes it too? I believe it too. As long as I'm alive, it's my season. When I'm 60, not if, I'll be deeper than I am now. 
When I'm 70, I'll still be deeper than I am now. Next year, wait. You'll hear for yourself. You see, since you are seasoning, when you are in your season, things happen. But you, you, if you don't do a lot in your season, you might struggle when another man's season comes. No, listen. <laughs> my season is not subject to another man. And let me be clear on that, my brother. Your season is not what? No. It's yours. Somebody say amen. That is why in the scripture of Psalms he says, they shall produce fruit in their own season. In its own season. He's planted by the riverside. And the Bible says he shall produce fruit in his own season. You know, we are the ones who create our own season. We are not subject to the season of men. No. Even you right now, you can make a decision and change something. Somebody say amen. So, somebody wakes up and tells you, you know, you better take... Uh, you better do this while there is still opportunity to do it. Uh -huh. Listen, there will always be opportunity for me. Hey, but what if you grow older when you can't run fast? Like, uh, no, who told you I won't run? You think I plan to get old like some of you? <laughs> oh, I'm too old. No. Kariba. <laughs> Somebody say amen. At 70, you're the fittest person on the pulpit. Not by power. Not by might, but by my spirit. The Bible says Moses' sight was very clear at a very old age. And his natural face was not abated. There was nothing that had changed on him. This was Moses. Moses! Some of you have not understood what I'm saying. This was what? Moses. 120 years. The guy's face was very straight. His eyes were keen. 120 120. The man's face had not even changed. For you are planning to grow old already. You are 25, but they meet you with your mother and they say, is this your young sister? Tell somebody I refuse. In the name of Jesus. It's in such moments that we fix our bodies. Say in the name of Jesus. Even in old age, I will be healthy. My natural face not abated. My sight will be precise. Grace. Hallelujah, somebody. These words are life to them that find them. And the Bible says they are medicine to their bones. You can't listen to a certain sermon and your bones are funny. No. As you continue to listen to a certain thing, they say, wait, right now somebody's bones are... Because they are life. You're seated in life. You're receiving life. Kariba. Praise the Lord Jesus. They will look at us, we'll have conversations, and people will be talking about us. But you know, those guys don't grow old. That guy is older than you think. Then you tell them your age and then they say, How did you do that? You just tell them, Now, let's go back. He says, if the ministration of death came with such splendor, that men could not behold the face of Moses. He says, now if, next verse, why should not, you see, why should not the dispensation of the spirit, this spiritual ministry, Whose task is to cause, cause, somebody say cause, men to obtain and be governed by the Holy Ghost. Be attended, the Bible says, with much greater and more splendid. Why shouldn't it? Why shouldn't I be richer? Why shouldn't I be wiser? Why shouldn't I be stronger? Why shouldn't I walk in glory? Why shouldn't I? Why? Just tell me. Now you tell me. Tell me why I shouldn't. The Bible has asked me why I should not. Why shouldn't you be a success? You know, there are people who are preaching prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. You are going to heaven. There are prosperity preachers. Prosperity. No, no, listen. It's not me who said it. The Bible says, in this place I shall give peace and there shall be prosperity. 
It's not me. Blame the man who wrote it. Jesus. Tell somebody sitting that choice. Prosperity. They're talking about prosperity. All oh, those guys are talking about prosperity. What do you want me to talk about? Poverty? Poverty? Instead of telling people to go to heaven, they're talking about prosperity. No, 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 no. We are telling people to go to heaven, but we're also talking about it. You know, somebody one time asked me, this thing of prosperity, why are you people... Excited about it. And I told him, look, for me, it's a small thing for you to say I'm excited about prosperity. Because you don't know me. I'm too detached to the things I have. But I'm not sorry that I have them. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just trying, I told people, me, I'm just trying not to ashamed my forefathers. It's, no, that's what the Bible says. He giveth thee power to make wealth, that he might establish the covenant he made with your forefathers. Your wealth and prosperity is based on the promise he made to Abraham. That when you become poor, Abraham does like, oh God. Peter, come and see. You can shout hallelujah. He says, remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto his fathers, as it is this day. Because when I look in my lineage, there are no poor people. Am I the one going to assemble the family? Abraham was not poor. Moses was not poor. Ezekiel was not poor. David was not poor. Solomon was not poor. Malachi was not poor. Haggai was not poor. Zephaniah was not poor. Paul was not poor. Jesus fed 5,000... Now, Apostle, tell your neighbor, I cannot be poor. I cannot be poor. And I'm not sorry. How shall we win souls when we are broke? You're a man of God and you can't even pay fees. That should be far from you in the name of Jesus. Let your children look at your God and say, My father's God works. Let your children look at you and say, My mother's God worked. I believe in the God of my father because he was prosperous. He was wise. He was anointed. He was everything any man could dream. He says, Gentiles shall come to your light. They are not going to find you in a shack. I told people, some people here, you might see them in suits and ties, but where they come from, if they go back, they can die. Because they came from very poor. If it had not been for the Lord, leave us alone. And then you're reading the same scripture, in the same Bible, my God shall supply all my needs. According, which needs? Kofta. Tell somebody I'm under another covenant and I expect glory. God is shaking things for me. Tell somebody God is shaking things for me. He's shaking things for me. Read your Bible. Read your Bible in Hosea. He said, the desires of nations. Do nations desire money? Do they desire prosperity? He said, the desires of nations shall be brought to you. The desires of nations. They, whatever nations desire, God will bring it in the church. So that nations come to church. Read the Bible. He says, I will shake all nations. Say all. All. And the Bible says, and the desire of all nations shall come. So that means God wants to get what nations desire. And then it comes to your church. And then it sits in Fanero. <laughs> I 
And when the prosperity comes, he says, and I will fill the house with glory. So we are not only rich, but we have glory. We're not only prosperous, but we have the anointing. Come on, some, slap somebody and tell them that's me they're talking about right there. That's me. That is me. Oh, they said it. Makota la la mandoro. Zakata la 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 bara corre robo sterere. Rindo ribo sele carada rabaco satala. Senteri robo sere casu. Prundo lola la bazatala cosa tatiremo. Sarico sarabale cosa. Banderere cosa. Come on, speak in tongues for 15 seconds. Let me allow you. Conceive it. Sarere lebo. Lambano it. The Amplified says, I will set nations. He says, I will set the nations. I will set the nations. The desire and the precious things of all nations shall come in. Come on, somebody, open for them to come in. Tell them, I open for you. Desires of nations, I open for you. The precious things of nations, I open for you. Come, you're welcome. We need people to get born again. A man tells you, listen, a man tells you, I'm not coming to church. Ask them why. What is that? I have money. I have everything. A time has come where God will give us everything, physically, that when you tell a man come to church, he will just follow you. Because if he doesn't want your Jesus, he wants something on you. Tell somebody, I'm a wonder. In the name of Jesus. Look at yourself again and say, I'm a wonder. In the name of Jesus. God knew, those of you who are against prosperity, God knew that we would not have glory in the latter church without the desires of all those nations coming in. He knew we can't win. He knew some men will not get born again when everything desired is there and it's not here. And therefore we are sorry if we don't subscribe to poverty mindsets. We are sorry. Everything has to come in here. The greatest engineers, they must come from here. The best doctors, they must come from here. The most successful businessmen, they must come from here. The biggest schools, they must come from us. The biggest hospitals, they must come from us. The most successful things, the biggest buildings in the world, they must come from us. And yes, we have glory. So that they can ask us questions. Let them ask us. I'm tired of us asking guys who are not born again. How do you do it? You find a Christian, you ask him, who is your mentor? Bill Gates. Does he speak in tongues? No. No. That has to change. God is a jealous God. I say that has to change. I didn't say should. It has. There was a man who they used to talk about in Kampala. He was always boastful. Oh, I'm rich. Oh, I'm this. The Lord told me he's going down. You remember? And he went down by the word. That same word. That same word is the same word telling you that he is shaking nations. That their desires might come in. They only become poor for us to become richer. I tell you church members, give me testimonies. Eh? There are things we fear to put on the pulpit. Because some people, we don't, we don't trust some of you who are hearing. But people have seen breakthroughs that will scare you. Erami, I fear for our future. It is too bright, I need shades. Somebody say amen. He is shaking. He is shaking. He is shaking the nations. Paul is preaching in Hebrews. And he is looking at the difference between law and grace. 
the dispensation of two. And then he tells them, look, you have not come to a mountain that can be touched. That's not the mountain we're talking about. That even the, Israel, the, the Israelites fear to touch for fear of death. No. He says, but she I come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God. And the Bible says, and the heavenly Jerusalem and the innumerable company of angels. And he says, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. And the Bible says, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Can you read that in the, in the message, 23? Only 23, we're going to come back. He says, and Christian citizens. The Bible says, it is the city, listen, where God is judged with judgments that make us just. Huh? They, don't, they don't destroy us. They don't make us wrong. The judgments of God make us just. Who believes it? I said, who believes it? The judgments of God make me just. That's why I've come. That's why I've come. Let's go back to the KJB, verse 24. And the Bible says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of, of Abel. That's why in the earlier verses, and I'm going to come back to 25, in the earlier verses, he tells them, Do not despise the chastisement of God. The disciplining of God. For those he loves, he what? When you look at the root word disciplining of the Lord, you're going to be amazed that it carries the primary definition to instruct in order to receive. But some of you, you get a headache, God is disciplining me. You get a backache, God is chastising me. No, it began in Hebrews 12. He's telling people of a chastisement. He's saying, I'm trying to instruct you a certain way. Don't despise instruction. Sons and daughters of this world are instructed by their fathers. How much more the father of spirits? God instructs spirits, not your body with cancer. But me, I'm sick because the Lord is, is he disciplining me. The Lord is chastising me. That is why I'm sick. God tempts no man with evil. Neither is he tempted with evil. Stop being sick and you're saying it is God. Oh, but Paul says that he sent a messenger to buffet my flesh. Read the Greek word sarx, S-A-R-X. You realize it's not necessarily this body body. No. In fact, it can even be emotional. <laughs> you don't get it. It's the same rendering for sarx. Anyway, back to the point. I want to whatever. Now, you realize this. He's telling you, I'm chastising you. I'm trying to discipline you. I'm trying to instruct you the right way you should go. Now, look, he says, you have not come to a mountain that, 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 that flames with fire and brimstone and cannot be touched. And even they that touched it were afraid that it might kill them. No. He says, for you are not coming to the mountain that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor unto the blackness and darkness and tempest. And the Bible says, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that had it entreated that the words should not be spoken unto them in any more. But the Bible says, but you are come unto Zion. That's where you've come. He speaks of Jesus Christ as the mediator of the new covenant, whose blood speaketh better things than the blood of Cain, of, of Abel's servant. And as I see that you receive not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on the earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. We will not escape it if we, 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 we turn away from him. And the next verse says, whose voice then, again he says, shook the earth, but now he has promised saying, he goes back to Hosea 2.6, Yet now more, he says, I shake not the earth only, but the heaven only. And the Bible says, and this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Let me explain what he means. When he speaks of the things that can be shaken, of the things that are seen. Number one, he's talking about the systems of this world. 
No, read the next verse. The next verse says, we, we therefore, the Bible says, we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. The kingdom we receive cannot be moved. Let us have grace. He says, let us have grace. Because the kingdom we receive cannot be moved. Any man out of the kingdom of God can be shaken. Any business out of the kingdom of God can be shaken. Any conglomerate out of the, out of the, 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 the kingdom of God can be shaken. Any, I don't care how big empire is. As long as it is out of the kingdom of God, it can be shaken. Any man you look at, I don't care how rich, how strong, how successful, how influential, how powerful, how many guns and bombs they have. I don't care how many... How established, you remember Gaddafi? The guy had every sin. And then he stood in Nachivubo. And then he said, the Bible is fake. When we heard it, we started saying, Riba Kashakata. Zara Katala Baye. Shandere Kosi Katala. Rika Toli Reba Bakoli Labakaste. Sorry, let him was ears here. No, we were saying you can't, you can't speak like that of the Lord of hosts. You're gone. You're, you're gone. The Bible is fake. The Bible is fake. And they got him from a very, what was, what was it? A ditch. Like a rat. And they pulled him off through the streets with everything he had. Why? Because how, I don't care how much splendor and beauty you see in the world. Everything there is temporal. Everything you see. I don't care how rich they are. It is temporal. I don't care how whichever kinds of houses they, they live in or cars they drive. It's temporal. I don't care how much power they amass. It's temporal. And this word is signifying the shaking of things as of those things that are shaken, that can be shaken, that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken can remain or will remain or may remain. In other words, in the end we will win. We must win. There are men right now who are working hard, amassing millions of dollars on their account, and then God will just come and do like this. Can you scream? There are people building skyscrapers and they are saying I'm the richest man in the world and then God will just tell somebody the shaking is coming, the shaking is coming, the shaking is coming, the shaking is coming, the shaking is coming. Tell somebody the shaking is coming. Because we have the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Men are going to become poorer in the world while the church is becoming richer. Men are going to become less, I mean, sick in the world while the church, the, the church is healthier. They have to ask us, Muchkola Mutia. Then we tell them, uh uh uh. It's the word of God, it's medicine. Embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace it. A woman came to the office one time and she was dressed full Muslim attire. Full Muslim attire with everything covering everywhere. Then she sat at the office. Like, whole face like this. Then she came into the room and told me, I want you to pray for me, Apostle Grace. I said, what is that you're putting on? I'm Muslim. My husband is Muslim. I am a Muslim. I am Inside there, I'm a Muslim. So why have you come here? No, they told me your God works. <laughs> and I told her, you're damn right, he does. Yes. So what do you want? I prayed for her. Things happened. Next week, she's back again. Now, <laughs> the other one worked. Let's pray for another one. <laughs> I'm soon winning her to God. Very soon. Very, very soon. Very soon. Why? Because what is on us is irresistible. 
God wants to take you to a place where a man just looks at you and he says, I want your God. That signifies the shaking. You remember in the book of Acts 2, when Peter is speaking to the congregation, after they've spoken tongues in the upper room, and then he says, and I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and young men shall what? And then he is quoting who? Joel. You remember that? Uh, yes, thank you. And shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Lord, and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And the Bible says, and on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days uh, the what? Of my spirit, and they shall what? Prophesy, and you see the full what? Wait, 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 full colon. Meaning that what is following is because of what has happened before. So because of the outpour of the Spirit, next verse says, I will show wonders in heaven, because he has filled men with the Spirit, and signs in the earth beneath, because he has filled us with the Holy Spirit, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. You understand what I'm saying? Now, again, full colon. Praise the Lord. Next verse. Because of that, again, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great day and notable day of the Lord. Again, what? Full colon. Meaning what is coming after again is because of what is before. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me explain what happens. Things are going to happen in the sky under the sun. What? Blood. Things will flip. And then men will say, Jesus! But those things are going to be working by who? Eh? Those things are going to be working by who? Have you ever read Exodus chapter 14? Verses 31. The Bible says, Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. Eh? And the people of feared the Lord, the Bible says, comma, and believed the Lord, comma, and his servant Moses. God wants to do something. Over who am I speaking to? God wants to do something in your life. That will cause men to fear you. You see, I don't believe in those who are locally. No. God is going to do something. That will cause men to believe in you. And in your God. They will believe you when you say. That is the time we are entering. Because the shaking is taking place. 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 If you ask an economist and ask them, how many years do you need for Uganda to be first world? They'll give you many years ahead. And I'm sure you, some of you can guess to get to first world. But let them watch. Let them watch. That is why we are in Uganda. Because if we went to America, they'll say, ah, you went to America where everything was. No. Katujitandi kirewa no mukafufu. Nempewa 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 they will see things in Uganda. Can you believe that God wants to start flipping the earth? Eh? The sun will become black for you, if you want. The weather will change for you, if you like. The clouds will... Whatever God said, this word is signifying the shaking of things. And we've entered the zone and time where God has started to shake economies for Barokoli, the saints... The believers. He has started to shake political systems for believers. He has started to shake business institutions for believers. He has started to, to shake education institutions for believers. You better get this thing or die a survivor. Me, I, I allowed, I said, God, Serena, choice. Somebody say amen. Now, some of you, the problem is you look at your cheap t-shirt and, and, and shirt and shoe, and then you say, I don't even understand what it is. Listen, there is nothing around you that signifies you. Everything, even your hair and bag, those are temporal. It's only a matter of time. These things are starting to change. The Lord spoke to me this period and told me these things are starting to change. We are entering a zone... And time where some of us are even going to be scared to speak how much money we have on the accounts. Some of you are going to be investigated. Because they will suspect. They won't be 
able to explain you. They won't be able to explain you. But some of you are looking at your education status. You're looking at your level of degree. You're looking at your, the village where you came from. And like, ah, now me, how will I? Now some people are rich in this world. Listen, what does it take God? The children of Israel were under bondage in the days of Pharaoh. And the Bible says, even under bondage, they were increasing. Not only in number, in animals, in everything. They were under a foreign nation, but they were still richer. They were richer than Egyptians in their own land. The blessing of God is amazing. It can, it can raise you even in the least expected. Some of you are even going to quit jobs one day because you're becoming richer than your boss. In the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah! If you're a boss of someone and you're here, also claim a higher boss. It will reconcile. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now I want to finish on this. I realized it was the ministration. That is why when, 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 when you see, some of you don't understand. Hegai, Hegai the prophet, Hegai, and, uh, and Zechariah were two prophets which were raised in the time of inspiring Israel to rebuild the temple. But not as of rebuilding the temple from ashes, no. It had been rebuilt up to a certain period. And the Bible says, and enemies came in from the north and frustrated the work. And God raises Haggai and Zechariah to inspire the children of God to finish what was started. I'm not talking about somebody who is beginning from scratch. I'm talking about somebody who began somewhere, but certain things have been stuck at a certain position. And there's a way you're telling God something has to move me higher. When I look, I have put the foundation down. I've laid it. I feel like there are walls on the side. But I reached in the middle of the work and something frustrated it. I have good news for you. The glory of the latter church shall be greater than the glory of former. The, the hands that began to build it, Zerubbabel, the same hands shall finish it. So the Bible says that the Lord despises not what? Humble beginnings. He says, who art thou mountain before Zerubbabel? What is that thing you think is going to frustrate you? And I have good news for you. Nothing is going to stand in your way. Okay, can, let me say it on myself. Nothing is going to stop me to be the man God has created me to be. And I'm not sorry that I'm a success. And I'm not sorry that I'm wise. And I'm not sorry that I'm increasing. And I'm not sorry that when things shake, they're coming in for narrow. Ah, I say they are coming. I say they are coming in. And I opened for them long ago. Some of you have closed your houses because of religion. You have closed your houses because of the law. You have closed your houses because of indifference. You are too afraid to be rich. You might fall. Don't give me too much money. God, I will forget you. <laughs> What do you mean by you? Solomon didn't. He went to heaven. David was rich and he went to heaven. Abraham was rich and he went to heaven. Over Dotia. Somebody say amen. amen. I have believed that every wonderful desire of nations is coming in my life. A time is coming and not far from now. And now I'm prophesying. Where men won't have any choice, but they'll call on the name of the Lord. They'll look at us and just call on God. They'll look at the health on us. They'll look at the success on us. They'll look at the wisdom, the intelligence by which we work, the perfection of things, the excellence by which we do things, and they will call on the name of the Lord. Leave alone these temporary things that are happening in your life that are only for a few weeks and few seasons. Some of you look at small things and then you, 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 you lose hope. Pastors, you enter your church and the, the chairs are empty. And then you say, did you call me God? Listen, it is too late. You were already called. You were justified. You were glorified. 
Even when you have three people in the church, preach like you're opening for the glory of God while the Lord is shaking. And there was a time many people did not embrace this because many people under the law are speaking of things that fed before them. But now we have embraced this. I wish my spirit could open for some of you to see the reality of what I mean when God says that every desire, every desire of nations is coming in this, 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 this temple. Everything the men of the world will wish to have, it is going to come to you. It is going to come to you. It is going to come to you. That is why you realize, Paul, he warns us that we refuse not. God is, is telling us, do not refuse to be a success. Do not refuse to be blessed. Do not refuse to be rich. Do not refuse to be healthy. Do not refuse to be a wonder. Do not refuse to be prosperous. He says, in this place, I shall give peace and prosperity. In this place. And he says, and the glory of the latter church shall be greater than the glory of the former. He says, the latter glory of this house, it shall be greater than the former. Because he will give you peace and prosperity. He's the Lord of hosts. He has said it and he intends to fulfill it. Now there are things that don't look like they are reconciling with what we see in the world. But I need to submit to you saints that I have started to hear the shaking. I have started to hear the second. I've started to hear the wisest men of this world run short of oracles. And the men which are of the spirit are increasing in the very oracles. I'm starting to hear the shaking of men in this world running out of ideas and solutions. And the children of God as though they are simply starting. That is why he says that the ministration of death had splendor. And it says much more the ministration of the Holy Spirit. It shall come with greater glory. Greater multiplications. Greater wisdom. Give me the message of that. 3.3. Three, three. He says, and the government of death is constitution, sorry, chiseled on stone tablets. It had a dazzling inaugural. The Bible says Moses' face as he delivered those tablets were so bright that day that even though it would fade soon enough that the people of Israel could no more look right at him than stare into the sun. And the Bible says, how much more dazzling than the government of the living spirit. And the next verse says, for if the government of condemnation was impressive, how about this government of affirmation? Bright as that old government was, it would look down, the Bible says, downright dull alongside this new one. In other words, men are going to look at the glory of the Old Testament and they are saying, no, this was a dull life compared to the life these guys are living. Before Jesus comes back, we are going to see a growth exponentially in the church of Jesus until men fear our God. Go to banks and open accounts and speak in tongues. In the name of Jesus. Work hard, meditate and speak words on your spirit. Let us not be as them which beat the air. O men which run without certainty. We carry a mastery and we, because we carry that mastery, the Bible says we strive lawfully. And we've embraced that law of the spirit. And that law has told us that God is shaking everything you see in this world. And those things are coming in the church. Somebody shout hallelujah. They are coming in the church. Now can you raise your hands and start speaking in tongues. There is power. In the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. Can you take a minute and just fix your life now? 
while you were praying. Eh? There are people here. I see certain visions started to hit your spirit as you are praying. Eh? Some of you, some pictures have come and they've thrown you to certain places. I don't need to explain those things because the people who have received those pictures know. I can only confirm they are found in the spirit by reason of the anointing in the name of Jesus. Take it! Whatever you've seen, I don't care how big it is. Take it! I don't care how impossible it looks. Take it! I don't care whether it doesn't equal to your education or pay grade. Take it! Oh my God. Some of the richest people the world has ever seen are here. Some of the most successful people the world has ever seen are here. Some of the wealthiest people the face of the earth has ever seen. Take it! Some of the wisest people the world has heard are here listening to me. At the sound of my voice, listening. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Clap for Jesus. Come on, clap for Jesus like a shaking just took place. Clap for Jesus like a shaking just took place. I see God shifting. Come on, tell things come in. Tell them come in. For 
the glory of God. Tell them, come in for the glory of God. I want to heal the sick. I want to cleanse lepers. I want to raise the dead. I want to bring souls to Christ. Whatever is needed, come in. Come in. Come in. Come on, clap for Jesus. Some things are taking place right now. I don't have words for them, but some things are taking place. I don't have words for them, but something is taking place in the spirit. And I feel it. I feel it. In the name of Jesus. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, come and receive it now. If you've never been born again and you want to be born again tonight, put up your hand wherever you are. You say, I want to be born again tonight. Come. Come and receive Jesus. Come and receive Jesus. Come and receive Jesus. Now you guys who are here, I want to pray with you. And I want you to repeat these words after me. Praise the Lord Jesus. Oh my God! Tell somebody there's a shaking. Repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you in my heart as Lord and Savior. Tonight, I welcome you in my heart as the Son of God who gave his life for me. And tonight, I submit to your Lordship and seven grace. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.